we've stopped. What is it? The first time I visited Lorixen, I was on Safe the way from Marcus to White Run. I'm still here. What do you need to take? Let's go. I only take real... Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Now, how I'll show you to your room. Happen? Right this way. All right. <coughs> no. This was but... It happened on a morning. I no sooner blinked when the snow except there was a piece of black crouched further down the road. A woman wearing a hooded robe, holding a small child. The restless dead, not free. But if you don't stop them, they'll move on in the hopeless. Interesting. Anything else? Indeed. I swore an oath to Orphic Stormcloak, my brothers and sisters. Sure. But my oath. I called out to her. I was relieved when she stood up, but the relief was short-lived. Mm -hmm. She scurried off into Is the forest. There was no place for a child. Is there something going on the sun was dimming, and in the winter, the night is as fast as it is long. The air was cold. Let's talk about it some no. Time. This cold was raw you enough so. that you could feel it pass through your teeth, even when your mouth was. As I said, no place for a child. So I hurried after her. Best I could tell, she was headed towards Orphan Rock. A grave. One place every Nord child in Helgen fears. Strange There's a lot of tales parents tell their children to get them to eat their greens or pray to the divines. One of them is the story of the Haggrave in Orphan Rock. They used to say if you didn't pray to the Nine, Arkay would send the old hag to kidnap you in your sleep. The witches of Orphan Rock are said to be the grown-up versions of all the children who forgot their suppertime prayers. As a young woman grown, I've long since outlived such juvenile tales, but my hand couldn't help but reach for my weapon. Darkness set in. I bit my lip, trying to keep my focus on the woman and the child. I followed their tracks through the narrow passageway formed by the rock, but when I came out on the other side, the trail had vanished. I found myself standing in a plot of follow dirt, empty save a rock marker. I called out again to the woman, but there came no answer. Then I called out once more, and then came a reply. It was a knock, like knuckles rapping against a door, and with each knock, the noise grew louder. No, not louder, closer. I swiveled around, and in my panic I dropped my mace. It wasn't until I'd reached for it that I saw it. The snow jumping off the dirt, as if the knocking wasn't coming from behind me, but beneath. Higher and higher, until it was right under my feet. And that's when the clouds shifted, and the moonlight lit the marker in front of me. It wasn't a rock marker. It was a grave marker. I did what any sane Nord would have done. I ran. When I got back to the camp, the quartermaster demanded to know where I'd been and what had happened to the supplies. In truth, no explanation would suffice. It's just as well, because even I can't explain what was under my feet that night. That's what I told my brothers and sisters back at the camp. They too thought it was an excuse for not retrieving the supplies. It didn't help that I was known for telling stories by the campfire. To them, this was just another tale I had cooked up like a chef makes beef stew. Did you know that Runrod Free Winter is a veteran of the Great War? 
Men is say that he's a hero, but he doesn't seem it's to be always been proud a part of. As a result, yet her advice was unnecessary. It wasn't until I was a girl of twelve, my heart broken by a boy I loved, that at first I yearned for death. Yes, I thought he loved me, but I was nothing but a toy for his amusement. I cut deeper than any sword, well, and hurt me more than any loss I could ever experience as a woman so. grown. Definitely. Funny as it is to say, there is nothing more emotionally wrenching than a young girl experiencing her first heartbreak. I wanted to die more than anything, and our case all fit to grant my wish. Indeed, that night, as I lay in my I bed, the air was so cold, stopped. and even in the middle of the sun's height, I huddled under the covers, trying to stave off the cold. I reached a point where I felt I could sleep, when I heard it, the breathing. No matter how much I shrunk into my covers, I couldn't avoid that foul hiss, but I dared not look. Then came the sound of footsteps walking to my door. Before I, I came, I was about to go into shock when I, I heard my mother's I voice. I I leapt out of bed and ran to the door, flinging it open. And there she was. My mother, holding a candle, and standing over her shoulder, was a wraith. My mother was a servant, and had yet to finish her duties to our lord. The boy who broke my heart was the noble oh, of course. I didn't. I did what my mother always told me to do. I wanted to live, then more than any other time, as two lives were on the line. And it worked, until I became a storm cloak. I think all that talk of dying and going to Sovngarde brought it all back. No, I'll starve to death first. I am a daughter of Skyrim. I don't fear death. I fear fear. And spiders. Maybe. But it's not as if I don't work sweeping, wash, and if a customer gets... F oh, lots of things. Well, although they fun. usually happen at night. And when I'm alone. But I can't take that chance of them happening when others are around. I'd go out and help Redleth pick out cabbage heads. Only they wouldn't be cabbage heads. Do you think that They'd be the heads of little children. Ever since you are then maybe Ragnar will ride by, still making the journey to Whitehorn as a headless a phantom. Or maybe I'd visit Rorik's Manor, and that bear he has mounted on his wall will come alive and reach down and bite him, right while he's cooking. Even here there are times I feel like my presence is a danger. Sometimes when I look up at the animals mounted above Milwaukee, I see the eyes move. As if someone were looking at me from behind the data. Them. It's an interesting study. Until next time. Not saying it's my business, but I have to ask. You're right. Let's get going. Let's go. Something on your mind? Yes. Take care. We've stopped. What is it? <sighs> Let's go. Children. Need something? Yeah. No, that My father, Ralki, manages the inn. He used to be a soldier, but he left that life behind. I. Until next time. Everything's in order. Did. But they running. Did you know that Rorik was sort of a hero during the Great War? But uh, then he almost got killed, and Johan Manette saved his life.
If you grow tired of adventuring, maybe you could move here and take up farming. Farming. You and me, honest pay for honest work. Honest pay for honest work. Honest pay for honest work. All right, then. Just talk a little, you and I. I'm so glad that we're traveling to Elegant Sanctuary together. The Skyrim wilderness is so scary when you're all alone. So. Victory is yours! 